Get thrown or something? Look, I better get you into town. Mm. Right, now, don't, now, don't move. You just lie still. I'll bring my horse over closer. He'd been disturbing the class by talking all morning. So finally I said to him, all right, Ollie, stand up. Morning, Mother. Good morning. Good morning. I gather you're talking about Ollie Jameson. Who else? <laughs> From what I gather, I hear he could give a honey bear lessons in mischief. Yes, he could. Anyway, I warned him about talking at least a half a dozen times. And finally I said, Ollie, suppose you'd had to take Mrs. Devon's place. Suppose you were the substitute teacher. What would you do? Do you know what he said? He said, I'd send me home. <laughs> Jared, that's supposed to be funny. Hmm? Oh, never mind, darling. This is one of Jared's I've got so much on my mind mornings. Well, as a matter of fact, I do. Meaning Jeff Bowden. Jared, that's over. You should forget it. It's not easy to forget the deputy taking him off to prison last night. Not trying to keep him there the rest of his life. He killed a man. He could have been hanged. With any other attorney, he would have been. I think he did very well by him, Jared. <laughs> the operation was successful, but the patient died. Oh. Jared, there was an eyewitness. I don't believe that eyewitness. I think he was carried away like everybody else. Good morning. Uh-oh. It's just a very long card game. I'll just have coffee. Thank you. <coughs> Those quit claim papers have to be signed today? Uh-huh. I have to record them in the morning. Come in early, will you, Nick? I want to get started with the Bowden appeal. I'm still harping on that. He's still on that. And still blaming him, too? Well, it's all pretty cut and dried to me. Bowden was tried by judge and jury, the whole pot of beans. Could I have some more coffee, please? It was, it was trial by hysteria, Nick. Nobody in this town could forget that the man who was murdered was a priest. Pure emotional bias, and I should have been able to cut through it. You ready, Audra? Ready. So you're going to throw the whole trial right out the window, huh? You're the one that always says, put your trust in the law. Bowden put his trust in me, Nick. You know something? I think that Ollie Jameson is a pretty lucky kid. Oh? Why? Well, he has about the sweetest and the prettiest teacher in all of California. Thank you. You know, when I was a kid, we once took a vote on who the prettiest teacher was. And you know who won? Who? Nobody. <laughs> I don't believe that. Well, you should. <laughs> you know, I'm pretty lucky, too. Why is that? Because I have a brother like you. 
Well, now, what brought that up? Oh, the way you fought for Jeff Bowden, the way you're still fighting. What's this? I thought you were on the other side. I can't believe that he's innocent, Jared. But it makes me proud that you care, that you're so worried. Angry might be a better word, Audra. What I consider a monumental mistake. But Mr. Becker saw him run from the church. Mr. Becker thought he saw him run because he wanted to see him run. Why? Maybe to make himself more important. Who knows? Enough to send a man to prison? It wouldn't be the first time it's happened. Get up. And I hope you have a nice day with Ollie Jameson. Aren't you going to your office? Just as soon as I finish here. Oh. Well, I'll pick you up after school. All right. Come in. Mrs. Haley? Oh, Mrs. Bowden will sure be pleased to see you. How is she? Well, she ain't been too happy. I mean, being left alone like this and the baby more than a week late already. Yes, Oh, well, it I... don't mean nothing being late. I brung lots of them to the world like that. Except it's her first and she's naturally scared. Oh, you remember my first, my little John? Well, he's a big boy now. Yes, Mrs. And Haley, after I gave I birth see her to now, him. Please. Oh, <laughs> you want to see Mrs. Bowden? Here I go, chatting away about myself again. Mrs. Bowden, you got yourself some company. Good morning. Oh, is this something new? Not yet, I'm afraid. But don't you worry, that appeal will be granted. I just stopped by to see if there's something you might need. No, I'll be all right. I'm sure you will. Especially when you have that boy. I think it's going to be a boy. Well, it has to be a boy. Jeff can't hunt and fish with a girl, can he? <laughs> I want to thank you, Mr. Barkley. I didn't get a chance to after the trial. There's so much confusion. You don't have to thank me. Not yet, anyway. You tried your best. And we're grateful. We're grateful you even took the case. Why wouldn't I take the case? Well, Jeff was only a handyman. There's no money to... Pay a lawyer like you. I believe that your husband is innocent. If I can prove that, that's payment enough, believe me. If it's a boy, would you like to be godfather? Mrs. Bowden, I would be honored. <laughs> well, I better get on to the office. I'll try and look in again tomorrow. But please don't get up. Oh, oh, it will do me good. You get tired of sitting and waiting. I'm looking for Jeff. Is he here? What happened? He got away from the marshal, and this morning up on the north road, he jumped Walt Tanner, grabbed his horse and gun. Now, Walt followed his tracks for a ways. He said they headed straight for town. Sorry, Mrs. Bowden. We'll have to search the house. Alec. Marty? Yes, sir. This make it worse for Jeff? It may. I only hope they can pick him up before he does something more foolish. Jared, I uh, may have to deputize you. No, thanks, Fred. Oh, well, wait a minute. You're his lawyer. He might listen to you. Not if I'm wearing a badge and hunting him down with the rest of you. Suit yourself. Not a sign of him, Fred. Nothing. I had to check, Mrs. Bowden. Mrs. Haley, if Jeff does come here, you let me know right away, understand? Now, the most important thing is that you keep him here, talk to him, make him understand that he's only hurting himself. And we've got to stop him from making things worse. Mr. Barkley, help him. I will if he gives me the chance. Uh. You all right? Uh. Oh. Well, then about time. 
time. Come along now. Let's get to bed. Easy now. Barclay, wait. Have you seen the sheriff? They said he was here. He was. He just left. Jack Bowden's back. The sheriff's got to give me protection. I'm sure he will, if you need it. Look, Mr. Barclay. I stood up there in court. I did my duty. I testified against Bowden. Now, don't you say to me if I need it. I could have told you he'd come back. If he gets a chance at me, I'm like that priest. I'm dead. We don't know that he came back for you, Sam. I know. You, you were there yourself. You heard what he said when they were taking him away. I ain't forgetting you, druggist. I'm going to pay you off. It takes 500 years. I'm going to pay you off. Anybody might have said that, Sam. He thought you lied on the stand. Why? What for? Why would I want to hurt him like that? You ask him. All the time his wife's been expecting. You ask him how much he paid for her pills. Half price, because he couldn't afford no more. Ain't nothing to him. He's going to kill me if he gets a chance. Now, look, Sam, we don't even know he's here. If he is, this town isn't that big. We'll find him. Before he finishes me? Before he finishes himself, I hope. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine, Miss Barkley, except I can't run around this morning. On account of this new jacket I got from Pa. It's very handsome. Are you feeling better? Huh? Well, you were out all week. I thought you were sick. Oh, no, ma'am. I've been running the store. I don't mean rolling pills and such. Just watching while Pa was in court. I see. Pa wouldn't just leave the drugstore like that. Only they said he had to go. He had to stand up in court and tell what he saw. Of course. But looks like he won't have to go no more. They took Jeff Bowden away last night, and Pa says he ain't never gonna come back. Stevie, why don't you take your beautiful new jacket and hang it up before it gets dirty? Yes, Miss Barkley. Ollie, would you close the front door, please? Yes, ma'am. You sure it was Bowden? O over my place. He just missed me that much. All right, Marty, Alec, you both check the alley. Check every store, every house, everything. Come on, let's go. Hodges, Lavery, take Newbury Street, both sides. You two take Pierce Avenue, and the rest of you take the river. Fred. Yeah? You got another batch? Change your mind? Maybe you were right. He might listen to me. Good. We'll check Lawton Street. <laughs> you reckon you're gonna be? Oh, that long. Uh-huh. Anytime a woman tells me she's not gonna be long, she's going shopping, it's three to one. I'll be back before she's through. <laughs> now, I best get over there and get those papers signed. So you wait here, I'll be right back. Oh, no, I'll walk through the boat. It's not fun. Uh, not with all those packages you don't. I'll be right back. All right. All right, get up. Good morning, Victoria. Good morning, Arthur. What can I do for you? Oh, I'd like to see some baby things. For a friend. <laughs> you betcha. Any idea what she needs? My guess would be just about everything. Well, fine. Let's start with the blankets. Ellen, good morning. I shouldn't be too long, Arthur. I just have to get some things for supper. Nice to see you, Victoria. There we are. All blue? Well, it's the only color I carry. Everybody hopes for a boy. Well, not this time. I'm hoping Mrs. Bowden has a girl. Mrs. Bowden? Girls are much easier to raise alone. Is that who you're buying for, Jeff Bowden's wife? Shouldn't I be? 
Well, it's your money. You do what you like. Seems to me, though, when it comes to trash like the Bowdens. I've learned one thing in this valley. There's room for all kinds. Men like you and Jeff Bowden. And no man has the right to call another trash. Look, Bowden's a killer. He killed a priest. Jared thinks he's innocent. He's going to appeal. Well, let him. It'll take more than a lawyer. It'll take an act of God. If you don't mind, Arthur, I'd like to finish my shopping. Now, would you show me some other things? Stevie, I'm afraid your absence has put you behind the glass. I got it wrong? Mm-hmm. A lot? Well, a lot or a little doesn't matter. In arithmetic, you have to be perfect. Five and four. Nine. And three. Twelve. And seven. Eighteen. And nineteen. Sometimes second guesses are better. Sorry, Miss Barkley, we had to look in. We're out here, Jeff Bowden. Jeff Bowden, you're in Stockton, are you sure? No question about it, ma'am. He took a shot at the bacon and ran down the alley. Well, he didn't run in here. The only criminal we have is Ollie Jamison. He talks too much. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, he's got to be around. We'll pick him up. Sorry to bother you, man. Well, shall we go on? Stevie, there's no reason to be frightened. But he came back to kill Pa. Now, that's a silly idea. On account of Pa talked against him in court. He isn't going to hurt your father. He isn't going to hurt anyone. Stevie, would it make you feel better if I let you go be with your father? Yes, ma'am, please. All right, go ahead. And don't worry about your lessons. I'll bring them over to you. Well, now, who would like to finish the blackboard exercises? Ollie? No, ma'am. I just wanted to tell you, Stevie forgot to take his jacket. Oh, well, maybe you can catch up with him and give it to him. So far. You take the rest of the street alone if you don't mind. I think I better get back in case some of the others get lucky. All right, Sheriff. Jared, you knew him better than anyone. You any idea who might be hiding him out? No, Sheriff, I haven't. All right. You better sit down. Go on, sit down. I don't mean you, I don't mean any of you, no harm. Not so long as you're all quiet, you understand? Just be quiet. You're not thinking of hiding here, are you? You got someplace better? Now look, it wasn't my notion to hold up in here, but I didn't have no time to pick and choose, you understand? Or to think about the children if there's any shooting. Please, just let the children go. I can't. Now, I can't take that chance. Children, I think we'll skip history today. Why don't we draw? Let's get out our slates. school. Miss Barkley said I should be with you. With me? Well, sure, on account of Jeff Bowden. Unless you ain't heard. I heard. Pa, you got any notion? 
notion why he came back? I... I wouldn't hardly know. <laughs> Here, let's... Let's call this a little pay on account. Pay for what? There's a couple of cases in the back room. As long as you're here, you might as well get them unpacked. Sure, Pop. Hi, that's my new jacket at school. Stevie. Steve, wait a minute. It's almost time for the children's recess. People are used to seeing the children outside. Boy. I ask you something. What you got there? What do you got? Fix me up just fine. Jared. Sheriff told me about Bowden. Think he'd come back here to kill Sam Becker? I hope not, Nick. Now don't put yourself out on the end of a limb, Jared. Kept him from being hung, what more can you do? Maybe just keep him from hanging himself. I got to report back to Fred. I just best go along. You knew he'd go yelling to his paw. Yes. And you give him a hand. Didn't matter who, what happened to me. Why? Why, did I hurt you any? Did I try to do you some harm? Look, you got me tied up here like a, like a goose, ready for market. Mr. Bowden, I'm Audra Barkley, Jared's sister. I know that. Why don't you let me send for him? He'd help you. I know he would. Wouldn't do no good. No more than before. Don't you know this town's got a, got a taste for blood? They're going to come after you. They'll have guns. Let the children leave. I'll stay. I can't. I told you I can't. Did you pick him up? No, but I got a dozen men out looking for him. That's not enough. You need more. Every man you can get. You want to set this whole town in a panic? We pinned him down with a bunch of nervous guns. We're going to force him into doing something that maybe we could prevent. He'd kill a mad dog in the street. He killed that priest. That's one man's testimony. You listen to me, Mr. Jared Barkley. Pa! 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 Get Bowden in the gun! What? Get in the school! Get Bowden in the school! Round up the others, fast. What are you talking about over there? What are you two talking? Now you sit down. Go on, sit down. Something out there? What is it? What do you see? I ask you what you see.
Joe. Alec and Marty are covering that alley back there. Tell them to stay put till they get the word. Stay put? What for? You got him hold up. He's not the only one in there, Becker. Where's Mother? She's over at Cleaver's getting some baby clothes for the Bowdens. You'd better get back there and take her over to Bowdens yourself. No, oh, no, wait a minute. You want her to hear about him being in there with Audra? What good would it do? How soon are you going in, Sheriff? Not sure, Nick. It's going to take some figuring. All right, I'll be back. Well, you are on time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good thing I got the buggy outside. Next stop, Bowden. That's right. All right. Thank you. Uh, I, uh, I was just thinking, uh, well, maybe I should buy the kids something, too. Uh, uh, come on, you can help me pick out the That's sizes. silly. I bought him everything he could possibly use. I think I'll always use more, Mother. You know, there's cottons for the summer, flannels for the winter. Uh, you know how those kids grow. Come on, come on, now, let me play Santa Claus, too. Victoria! Uh, huh? Victoria, have you heard? Jeff Bowden's escaped. They've tracked him in the schoolhouse. Our Henny's there. And your Audra, too. Audra, get your coat. Hurry! How dared you? How dared you? dared you keep this from me? Well, Jared and I both Next thought that... Next time, let me do my own thinking. You just gonna stand around thinking? You want Bowden so bad? Bring him out yourself. I'm no hand with a gun. You're real fast with ours. Sam, you can hardly blame him. Your son's out here, his kid's in that school, along with a lot of others. I don't know him nothing, none of them. You liked it fine when I told what I knew, when I stood in the court and testified knowing that Bowden would hold a grudge. Well, I've done enough of this town. I ain't doing no more. He's a killer. I ain't setting myself up for him. Now, he's there. You've got to get him out. Somebody. Some way. Fred, I think I can get him to come out. No, Jared. He's trapped. And he could be dangerous. Besides, it's not your job. It was my job to keep him from being where he is. Hi, you said... Not now. I'm going in, Fred. Barkley. We know you're in there. I want to talk to you. Get up. Get up. Get up. Sit. I don't do anything foolish, Jeff. I only want to help. I'm not armed, Jeff. I'm coming in. Now, you hold it right there. Shut that door. You put your gun up, Jeff. What do you want? To help you, if I can. You tried that once, lawyer. Don't be a fool, Jeff. You're throwing away the only chance you have. Can't you see that you're throwing away your life for Becker's? Becker? I'll get this straight. If you kill Becker, a dozen lawyers won't be able to help you. Hang. Oh, now, you got it all wrong. That's not it at all. No, you're the one that's mixed up. You know why I come back here? I come back here to see my kid. That's right, see my kid. I've been waiting 12 years. Since the day we was married, 12 years, my wife's been hoping and, and praying for a youngin' to hold in her arms so we wouldn't be alone in this world. So it would matter to somebody what happened to us. Miss Haley, she said the baby would be born any minute. And I begged that sheriff to let me wait so I could see my kid, maybe touch him. But he said no. It was out of his hands. I'm sorry, Jeff. I wish you'd spoken to me about it. Nothing you could do. Well, there may be something I can do now. What? If I help you get over to your place so you can see your child. Will you give me your word you'll surrender afterwards? All right, you got it. All right, now you've got to do exactly as I say. Go 
Audra, you get over here. The back way is our only chance. Awful quiet. Think we should go and see? Not yet. Give Jared a chance. Marty! Alec! Come on in. It's all over. Both of you, put your hands up. Where's Jared? He's in the school. Been in there quite a while. Nick! Victoria, please, stay no. here. Don't go. You're in the closet. Who's in the closet? The sheriff's men. Where's Jared? Bowden put a gun on our backs. With your brother helping. Well, somebody tell me what's going on around here. Where'd they go? They went to Bowden's house. Nick, he just wanted to see the baby. She kept asking for you through the whole thing. And once they get started, ain't nothing can stop them. You got a boy. Boy? A boy. My wife? Oh, she's fine. A little weak, of course. Well, you can go in. He's going to be big enough someday to hold on to an axe or gun. His pa's going to show him how. You sure of that? <laughs> Jeff. I'm sorry, Jeff. It's time. You've got to take me back? You know I do. Why, you, you know I'm innocent. Not under the law. Look, why don't you, uh, why don't you tell them I held a gun on you? Knocked you out, got away. My wife will back you up. Now, you kept saying about justice. Now, wouldn't that be justice, helping a man that's innocent? Not letting him pay for something he never done? I can't. Look, what you want me to do? Right up there in that jail, not ever see my wife from a kid no more? I want you to give yourself a chance. Give me a chance. Wouldn't do no good no more than before. Look, I know you tried. And I'm thankful to you for it. But you said they wouldn't hold me guilty. They didn't have no case. Well, mister, they didn't want no case. They just wanted to pay somebody off for that priest. Now, I had my fill of the law, Mr. Barkley. I ain't gonna take no more. I'm pulling out. And I'm going with your helping me or without. Now, what's it going to be? Without. All right, then. Just don't you stand in my way. Jeff! Oh, no, 
Let me talk to him. Jeff, you're wrong. You've got to listen to me. You've got a lot to live for now, a lot. Jeff, you've got a son. Now, you can't just think of yourself now. You've got a wife and a family, Jeff, a boy. They need you. Now, come on, Jeff. Give me the gun. You won't be any good to them dead. Come on, I can explain it to the sheriff. Your friend, the sheriff. You had him waiting for me. Jeff, that's not true. You've got to believe me. No more. The best you could, Jared. We'd best be going on home. It's all over now. It's not over, Nick. Not yet. was trying to get away. The same way he was trying to get away from Father Paul. The truth only matters to me now, Mrs. Bowden. He was like to going out of his mind. Baby coming. And us strapped for money. And Jeff wanted so much for him. Hearing about that money in the church and swearing he was going to get it. He wouldn't listen to me no more than you. Said the church didn't need the money. Grab the gun and run out. He wasn't there. Just desperate was all. That's the way it is, I guess. It don't matter if you're good on the inside. You do something bad, you gotta pay. That's the law. The law is right.
middle of a cycle. This town is going to have one big headache in the morning. Sorry, I haven't even got a closet left. Oh, us. we have a reservation, the Barclays. Oh, Victoria and Audra. I never forget a reservation. What is all this? Cattle, Mrs. Barclay. Cattle, pure and simple. Every rancher with more than one steer is looking to make a sale. Buyers all the way from Denver fighting for the honor of paying top dollar. Well, congratulations. Tired. A little. Are these your bags, ma'am? Yes, that's right. Now, if there's anything you ladies want, just holler. Nobody will hear you, but it's good for the lungs. What time does the connecting stage to Stockton leave? First thing in the morning. Room's 3738 for Mrs. Barkley and her daughter. Thank you. Excuse me, but uh, you two ladies wouldn't happen to be cattle buyers, would you? Sorry. So am I. Who's got 37? I do. I'll be out of your way in a minute. Well, let me know when you want to have dinner. In about an hour. I hope you'll be comfortable, Mrs. Barclay. Oh, this door leads directly to your daughter's room. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Audra, I'm sorry, I fell asleep and...
Audra, why didn't you tell me you changed your room? I... Oh, I'm sorry. Well, hello again, ma'am. I thought this young lady was my daughter. I didn't mean to intrude. Oh. Excuse me. Yes, Miss Barclay? Could you please tell me what room my daughter is in now? Who? My daughter, Audra. Your daughter? Well, she was in 37, the one next to mine, but I was just there and all her clothes are gone. No, ma'am. What does that mean? She wasn't in 37. Well, of course she was. That room's been empty for two days. Look, Mr. Uh... Gates. George Gates. Mr. Gates, I realize everybody's in a playful mood, but I'm just a little too tired to join in. Now, what room is she in? Mrs. Barkley, I'm not as fresh as a daisy myself, so suppose we both stop playing. You helped us check in just a few hours ago. A, a very pretty young girl with long blonde hair. Mrs. Barkley, if your daughter was in this hotel, she must have come in in a suitcase. I never forget a reservation. That's what you said when we registered. You won't find her name in there. Why not? Because she never signed it. Where is she? There must be some mistake. There is, and you made it. Mrs. Barkley, your daughter was never in that room or in this hotel. Why don't you get a good rest? Things will look a lot clearer in the morning. There's one thing you can't remove. What? Her perfume. The odor is still in that room. Well, I was up in that room myself not more than an hour ago. I didn't smell a thing. I'm sure you didn't, but I did. Now, I know that perfume. I bought it for her. Do I have to go to the sheriff? Only if you want to cause trouble. That's exactly what I'm going to do, until I find my daughter. See the sheriff. You're looking at him. Oh, I, I need your help. Uh, people come banging through that door this time of night. Usually do. It's my daughter. She's missing. <sighs> Lady, half the world's missing something. The other half looking for it. But something has happened to her. What? I don't know. That's why I came here. Calm down and tell me about it. Well, we were on our way to Stockton. That's where Would we. Would you like some coffee? Mind if I have some? Sheriff. You got the floor. We registered at the hotel to wait for the next stage. I fell asleep, and when I woke up, Audra's room was empty. Not your daughter? Yes, everything was gone. Her suitcase, her clothes, everything. I asked the desk clerk if she had changed her room, and he said... He said he didn't know who I was talking about, that I was alone when I checked in. Were you? I just told you. Well, sometimes a long, hot stage oh, ride. Oh, for heaven's sake, Sheriff, I'm not senile. Well, maybe she found a traveling companion she liked better. Is that your professional opinion? Lady, this time... Victoria Barclay. All right, Victoria Barclay. Now, right now, this town is high on cattle. And the money that cattle will bring, it's like, uh, it's like an avalanche. You don't stop to ask if you want to be part of it. It just kind of sweeps you along. But they're telling me she doesn't even exist. Now, why would anyone want to... I don't know! Well, I just can't go in there. Sheriff, people, a whole lobby full of people saw us when we checked in. Now, why are you sitting there? Question them. Make them tell you what happened to her. You're the sheriff! No getting away from that, is there? Let's go. Satisfied? No. Well? I want to look at the room. And I want to talk to, uh... The porter and housekeeper. Look, Sheriff, I don't have... Humor me, George. Why don't you go 
go out and arrest some drunks. It's more your speed, isn't it? After I see the room. Up kind of late, ain't you, Sheriff? Man your age ought to spend as much time as he can resting. Send up the porter and the housekeeper. Why? Because I told you to. Something going on, Sheriff? Maybe. This lady thinks the hotel ought to supply a family as well as clean sheets. Oh, why don't you go back to bed, Sheriff? I can handle it. I'm up now, Hearn. I'll see it through. When you get tired, you holler. Bring them up to, uh... 37. Empty to me. Exactly. A whole town is bursting at the seams. People are sleeping all over. Now, why? Why would there be a perfectly good room empty? You got a point. This closet. This closet. It was empty. This is Mel Trevor's room. He's been here for the past week. I told her that. No. This bureau here. The bureau drawers, the cot. It was empty. Mrs. Barclay. It was empty. All right, in here. I want you to help the lady. You remember my daughter, don't you? No, ma'am. Oh, yes, you do. You brought her bag in here and you put mine in the other room. Yes. Yes, yes, ma'am. There. You gave me a dollar. That's right. I thought it was a lot of money for bringing up one bag. Oh, no, no, two. Two bags. No, no, ma'am. One. One bag. Yours. I left it in room 38. Annie, did you see the lady's daughter? You were turning down the bed when we came in. I haven't worked this floor all day. But you talk to us, you smile. You saw her. All of you saw her. So you tell him. Tell him you're lying. laugh with your friends over the feeble-minded lady from Stockton? Uh, maybe somebody down there has seen your daughter. Then, then you believe me. I didn't say that. Why, help me. As you said, I'm the sheriff. I'll go with you. Get some rest. I can't. You come on as strong as you did up here, and people are bound to back off. Oh, I won't, I promise you. Oh, please, please, she's my daughter. All right. Just remember, you dragged me over here to ask the questions. Tired yet, Pop? I'll let you know. Hungry? Oh. When's the last time you ate? That doesn't seem very important, though. Things always look better on a full stomach. Take it from someone who's put in a lot of hungry hours. Come on now, Sheriff. Don't be a hog. Introduce us. We've met. Not formally, ma'am. 
It seems you two have adjoining rooms. Well, now, that's cozy, isn't it? What room would that be, Mel? Well, I'll tell you, Sheriff. You, uh, you ask me to sit down, and uh, maybe I'll let you force it out of me. My name is Mel Trevor, ma'am. The Sheriff asked you what room you were in. 37. I didn't know you were staying in town, Mel. And I didn't know I had to tell you every move I made, Sheriff. Just making conversation. How long has it been? I'll tell you what. Why don't you give me a refill? Give a lady what she wants and uh, give us a chance to get acquainted. Got to keep asking until you answer, Mel. How long have you been here? Oh, about a week on or off. Get lonesome at the ranch? Listen, I got 4,000 head of cattle out there. Bidding starts tomorrow. I got to line up the best prices I can going in. Oh, by the way, you ought to be at the pens by dawn. Don't think I can make it. Why not? Might have something a little more important than uh, keeping the peace for a bunch of steers. There is nothing more important in this town than steers. If anybody ought to know that, it's you. Ma'am, do you have any children? Three sons and a daughter. Well, maybe you'll understand what I'm talking about. Cattle are a lot like uh, some children. You uh, spend your life taking care of them because they uh, don't have enough sense to take care of themselves. You worry about their weight, what they eat, whether they're warm enough in the winter, cool enough in the summer. You don't really have much time for anything else. But, but if they grow into what you want them to be, why, I guess it was all worth it. Where is she? Uh, I beg your pardon, ma'am. Well, you're obviously in on it. Uh, Sheriff, uh, what is she talking about? I thought I was supposed to ask the questions. But you're not. You're just chatting. One swallow, that's the deal. Well, if you let me in on this, ma'am, maybe I can help. Steady as she goes, sailor. Oh, he ain't no sailor, ma'am. He's just a plain, everyday range bomb. Why didn't you say some of that? You're thirsty, lady? No, but my daughter might be. Hmm? The pretty blonde you danced with a few hours ago. Frank, did I dance with a blonde girl? Well, if you did, you sure kept it from your best friend. You know who I mean. No, ma'am, I don't. Once you bring her on over, I know I'd like her. Now, what did that get you? Is the whole town in on this? Why? What did we do? Why did you sit down? What did we do to them? What did we do to them? Now, you listen to me. You listen to me. My name is Victoria Barkley. My daughter's name is Audra Barkley. Now, she's missing. And a lot of you know what happened to her. And I'm going to find her. You think because I'm a woman that I'll give up, that I'll turn and run? Well, I won't. So you better get used to me. I'm staying right here until I find my daughter. I'm not leaving here until I find her, and I warn you. I warn you. She better not be hurt. I'm a doctor, Miss Barkley. Try to calm yourself. Get her up to her room. No! 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 Let her be, Hearn. She's giving the hotel a bad name. Well, it's better than the one it's got. Now, it's all right, Let Mrs. Please. Barkley. No! Oh, no! I'm going to give you something to help you rest. No, no, I don't want to rest. Now, listen no. to me, ma'am. Just listen. Now, just dry your eyes and relax. No. Well, let her alone. Let her alone. You're in on this, too. Hey, 
It's all right, folks. It's all right. If the lady's a little disturbed. The doc will take care of her. Hey, go ahead with what you're doing. Hey, Stage is here. They're holding it for you. Let it go. I'm not leaving. We need the room. Somebody who knows Audrey was with me. Thought we had that also. The stage driver, he drove us all the way from Salt Springs. Where is he? There he is. Oh, no, no, not him. Oh, you mean that uh, tall, yes. early headed? Yes, yes. Yeah, he's halfway to Denver by now. Yes, but he knows Audrey. Oh, I, uh, I don't know what the doctor gave you, but it really worked. You slept clear through, Mrs. Barton. You're a day behind the rest of us. Where's the sheriff? Well, most folks come to me with their problems. I'll take my chances with him. He can't do nothing for you. He's a tired old man. Well, he gets out of breath just pulling on his boots. Now, let's go back to the hotel and pack your bags and make sure you're on this stage. Got your ticket, Mrs. Barkley? You'll need it for the stage. How many ways do I have to say it? I am not leap. Yes, yes. Yes, I have my ticket. Yes, I have my ticket, and I have Audrey's. Now, if I were traveling alone, why would I have two tickets to the same place? Can you answer the lady's question, Hearn? Neither can I. Now, do you believe me? Well, let's just say I don't doubt you so much. All right, where do we start? I guess the best place would be where you lost it, a hotel. You won't find nothing there except trouble. What kind of trouble, huh? The kind you can't afford. A man can afford most anything when he's got nothing to lose. Well, how about the lady here? From where I'm standing, it looks like she's got a lot to lose. Awful lot. Let's go. Oh, uh... You're going all right. You just might have company. It's nice and quiet for a change. Bidding started today. Everybody's out at the pens, where I ought to be. Mr. Trevor's looking for you. Not a fact. Once you're out at the pens. Later. You won't like that. I'm not one of Mel Trevor's steers. <laughs> Aren't you? You know, George, something's nagging at me. Well, the doc is in room seven. It's a riddle, a real puzzler. Not interested. Well, you're part of it. Still not interested. Now, you said that Mrs. Barclay's daughter didn't register, so she was never in this hotel. That's right. Everybody who stays in this hotel must register, right? That's the rule, Sheriff. Mel Trevor's name ain't in your book. Does that mean he was never in this hotel? He didn't have to sign the register. It's the rule, Mr. Gates. Maybe in all the rush to get his things into the girl's room, it just 
slipped everybody's mind. Excuse me, I have work to do. I hope you can do it in my office, George. What? You're under arrest. On what charge? Keeping sloppy books. You can't do that. Watch me. I'm not going, Sheriff. Well, after what you've told me, you need protection. I didn't tell you anything. Didn't you? No! You're a very nervous man, George. Everybody knows that. No, yeah. Least little pressure, and you just break wide open. I, I, but you're my possum. I'm going to dangle you at the end of my rope and see what starts nibbling. I just do it, I'm told. I, I hand out the keys, and I sort the meal. And I laugh when someone tells a joke that I've heard a hundred times, because that's what I am. I'm a desk clerk. It isn't much of a life, but it's all I've got. Please, please don't take it away from me. Then where is she? They might make you understand. They'll kill me. You don't scare yourself to death first. No. No, no. No! George! No! They're just in the line of duty, Sheriff. Can't take chances with a man running from the law. Or talking to it. Lucky thing you weren't first out the door. Or are you, little lady? I'll do that. I'll do that. You know, that was a warning. It was telling everybody to keep quiet or they'd wind up like Gates. And they was telling us to back off or we'd wind up that way. Sheriff, if the whole town is in on this, why didn't they tell you about it? I guess maybe they figured if I knew, I wouldn't sound too convincing. Well, that's only part of it. More important, they knew I wouldn't do nothing if I did believe you. They were wrong. Not by much. Last night, you said they thought you'd turn and run because you was a woman. You don't have to wear skirts to do that. It's just what I want to do. Get out to those pens and mine Mel Trevor's cattle for them. They don't think very much of you, do they? I mean, the deputy, Trevor, and all the rest. They got a right. You see, this town, this territory, makes its living off of cattle. Prime stock bringing prime prices. When the bidding's over and the money's been collected, everybody puts it in the bank for safekeeping. You don't have to tell me. You ought to know who you're getting stuck with. Last year, three men made a withdrawal, using their guns for collateral. They cut the bank clerk down because his hands were shaking so bad he couldn't load the money fast enough. He was about my age, and he was an old man, no match for the three of them. Looking down at him, I knew I wasn't either. And it froze me. The first time in my life, I was scared of dying. I got on my horse, and I rode the other way. So the ranchers formed a posse, but they'd waited too long for me to lead them. They come up empty, and those three fellas ain't been found yet. But you're still a sheriff. <laughs> when I got back, they wanted to lynch me. Sometimes I wish they had. Instead, they hired Hearn to be my deputy and told him he'd be sheriff when my term was up. I got three months to go. Then what? I was a pretty good sheriff once. Tom voted me the use of 25 acres near the river. That totals out about an acre a year. It's uh, Trevor's land. And he can take it back. Well, anytime he wants. He's part of all of it. Well, now, that's my worry. Why don't you go back to the hotel? I'll be close by. I practically know your life story, but I don't know your name. It's Kingston, ma'am. Roy Kingston. I'm very pleased to know you, Mr. Kingston. I sure hope you say that when this is all over.
Who is it? Kingston. Sheriff. Sheriff, I know where Audra is. So do I. Trevor. Now, he gave me this handkerchief last night. It has Audra's perfume on it. I wired Stockton Didn't last you hear night. me? This Trevor just came... has Audra. Read it. Don't you... Oh, no. No, that's a lie. Well, your son's name's Jared, isn't it? Yes, but they tell him... Audra, safe and sound. Tell Mother to hurry home. We all miss her. Signed, Jared Barkley. They finally got to you, too, didn't they? What? Nothing. Nothing. Oh, Audra. Salt Springs, the last stop we made. I refused to believe it because I... I didn't want to believe it. <laughs> it's very hard sometimes for... A, for a mother to admit the truth about her daughter, but... <sighs> well, it's not so bad. After all, she's home now. Everything's all right. Yes. Yes, she's home. And I want to go home, too. What time does the next stage leave? A couple of hours. I'll be on. You sure? I... I just want to go home. I'm sorry I caused all this trouble. Oh, we understand, Mrs. Barkley. It was foolish of me. Well, we all let our imaginations run away from us sometime. Sheriff, thank you. Thank you very much for everything. fine and nobody got hurt if you don't count gates I don't Strain your elbow, you keep bending it like that, Roy. Mrs. Barkley's still stuck in his craw. We had to do it, you know that. Sure, I know that. And why fight it? It'll be over soon. That's supposed to make it any easier? Keep your voice down. Oh, come on, Mel. We don't have any secrets around here. 
We're just one big, happy family. Listen to me, you drunken bum. In three months, you're going to come crawling to me, begging for those 25 acres. I'm trying to forget that. Well, don't you forget it. Because I can still say no. Look at you. You're an old man. What are you going to do? Where are you going to go without me, without my land, without my charity? Think that over. I'll be in the office. And Sheriff, don't you uh, fall apart again, because there'll be nobody around to pick up the pieces. We should have taken care of him a long time ago. You'll get his badge soon enough. Is this her food? Yes, doctor. Where's Mr. Trevor? I don't know. All right, we'll take the tray on down to her. I'm not going down there. Take it down. you left town. Uh, I forgot something. Uh, what? Uh, something I left with the porter. Excuse me. I think we'd better tell the sheriff. Yeah, good idea.
Audra. 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 Oh, what did they do to you? What did they... The mover. Mm -hmm. Doc says one more night down here might finish her. But supposing somebody sees us. Everybody's drunk and tired. All we have to do is be careful. Please, please, let us go. She's very ill. So are you, Mrs. Barclay. Don't hold out too much hope for your recovery. You're not like them. Look again. you wake up everybody. Right. We'll take him out of town. Nobody will hear anything out at the Ophir mine. Well, keep him out of circulation for a few days. That was the deal. Mrs. Barkley just canceled that deal. She's one of the most respected women in the state. When she talks, everybody listens. But you just can't kill two people. Well, how can we kill them, Roy? Mrs. Barkley left town hours ago. Her daughter wasn't even here. Isn't that what she told you? Yeah, but I... We don't know where they went. Nobody else will either. Oh, you're quite a businessman, aren't you, Mr. Trevor? Tell me, how do you buy a man's soul for 25 acres of land near the river? That's all I've got. But is it all you want? Get the rig and bring it out back. Unlock the rear door. Go ahead, Sheriff. Go ahead, do it. Pretend we never existed. You can do that. What do two strangers mean to a man who doesn't even care about himself? All it takes is to... Oh! Back off, Mel! Get the ring! That's a hard you go, Hearn! She's trying. 
trying to save herself. That's what we're all trying to do, ain't it? Roy, the girl has anthrax. You know what that means. Nobody will touch our cattle. We'll be right back where we were a year ago, starving to death. A full belly ain't worth their lives. A few more days, it'll all be over. Cattle will be sold, and nobody would know. I'll know, Mel. You'll feel even better when Nick and Jared get here tomorrow, if you stay put. What am I going to do with her? Listen. Did I give the cattle anthrax? No, ma'am. Humans can't give it. No, well, they can only get it. Well, then why did they kidnap me? The buyers knew there was anthrax in the area. They wouldn't touch those cattle. The cattlemen around here would go broke. Why didn't you tell me you were ill, Audra? Well, I thought I was only tired from the trip. And I didn't want to worry you, so I asked the desk clerk to send up the doctor. After he examined me, he gave me a shot, and I went to sleep and woke up in that cellar. Well, it's over now. And as long as we have to stay here for a couple of days, we might as well be comfortable. Hmm. I'll see you before you leave. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you, Mother. She's got a painful sense of right and wrong. Are you sorry? No. Gave me another chance. Now, there are three fellas riding around out there with something that don't belong to them. And I got three months to get it back. You will, Sheriff. I think you're right. Now. It would depend on how I felt after I finished shopping, and right now I feel fine. The doctor's right over there. Won't you please go in and see oh, for me? Oh, Audra, dear, I promise you, the minute Dr. Mara gets home from his vacation, I'll go in and have a complete checkup. I don't understand. No one in this town will take a chance on a new doctor. Now, this new doctor, he wouldn't be young and handsome, would he? I don't know, but... But you've heard that he is, and you'd like to find out for yourself, hmm? Mother, how could you think... Anyway, you haven't any objections to going to a young, good-looking doctor, have you? No, as a matter of fact, I don't. I'll be out in a moment. Uh, please be seated. Vienna School of Medicine. Very impressive. I wonder why he came here. Well, whatever the reason, I think the people in this town should be glad that he did come to Stockton. He could have gone elsewhere. Yes, I suppose he could have. I'm afraid the chemical reactions... I'm afraid the chemical reactions over a Bunsen burner don't have the courtesy to wait while a doctor greets his patients. How do you do? How do you do? I'm Dr. Belden, and I'm most sorry to have kept you waiting. Well, I hope we didn't interrupt anything important. I assure you, you have not. Uh, Mrs. Barclay, Victoria Barclay. This is my daughter, Audra. So nice to meet you, Doctor. It's entirely my pleasure. You know, in the uh, short time I've been here, I heard more about your family than I have about Stockton. Well, I wouldn't believe everything I've heard. Please, make yourselves comfortable. Doc. Uh Found him hanging in the livery stable. He was barely breathing when I cut him down. This way. Mr. Gibbons? That's right. Everett Gibbons tried to take his own life? No. The way he was tied up, somebody tried for him. <clears throat> Easy. If you'll wait outside, please.
Victoria, I'm sorry you had to see this. I know you and Everett have been friends for many years. Thirty years. Well, <clears throat> I gotta be going. Well, Doc, thanks. You did the best you could. Considering. <laughs> Considering? What, I wonder? That Dr. Marar might have been able to save him if he'd been here? If I were, perhaps, 20 years older, more experienced? Doctor, when I was a child, I had a silly cold that was struck by lightning. And when she died, and for a long time after that, I blamed those that tried to save her. You see, I didn't understand. Understanding takes time. A great deal of time. <clears throat> Perhaps. People have to get to know you. Doctor, tomorrow evening I'm having the publisher of the Stockton paper for dinner. Won't you join us? Well, thank you. I'd, I'd like to very much. Good. Shall we say 7.30? 7.30 it is. Thank you again. Mother, didn't you want to ask the doctor something about yourself? Ask me uh, what? She hasn't been feeling well these past few days. Oh, it's nothing serious. I have been a little bit under the weather. You were running a fever last night. Only because it was very warm and I was tired. And if I don't look well now, Doctor, it's because it's lunchtime and I'm very hungry. Well, if you're sure, you know it'll only take... No, no, it won't be necessary, Doctor. My children have a tendency to over-worry about my health. They, uh... They don't know I plan to outlive them all. <laughs> Good day. Good day. There you are, Martin. Thank you, Victoria. More cake. Oh, no thanks. However, I could use a spot of brandy in this coffee if Jared would have a mind. Just as soon as I put this 12 ball in a corner pocket. Then I'll help myself. That'll cost you. And you too, if a good doctor's eye is as sharp as it's been all evening. I'm afraid it's a more question of pure luck than a sharp eye. I haven't played pool in years, not since my father taught me as a boy. your concentration. I was just wondering if your father was as cautious as you are. My father wasn't cautious in the least. Uh, a 12 ball in the uh, corner. Your father did a good job. You're winning, sir. Now, how about a chance to recoup? You, baby. I've still got a special edition to put to bed. A special edition? What about Martin? Ev Gibbons' murder. Oh. Is this some new development? You might say that. The sheriff found a note in the livery stable yesterday. Killer must have pinned it to Ev's body and it fell off. It was done in straw. Oh, wait a minute, here. I made a tracing of it. For what they did together, all will die as he did. Well, that looks like the scrawlings of a child. I know. Now, obviously, the meaning didn't come from the mind of a child. But what they did together, all will die. Kind of sounds like he intends to kill again. Yeah, that's what we're afraid of. Sounds frightening. Yes, I know, Audrey. But the one thing about a killer is that he always trips himself up. Well, I've got to go. Oh. Victoria, it's been delightful as always. And I wish you'd invite me more often. Mm. We don't see enough of each other. You know, you've been looking a mite on the pale side this evening. I've never known you not to have roses in those cheeks. I never felt better. <laughs> don't bother to show me out. I know the way. Jared? Audrey? Good night. Nice meeting you, Doctor. Oh, um... I'll see we get your name in print so folks will know you're around. Thank you. Night, Victoria. Good night. Well, I'd better be running along, too. Oh, can't you stay for another cup of coffee? Thank you, but it is getting late, and uh, Mr. Erskine is right. You are looking a little pale. But may I suggest some rest? There have been a few cases of influenza going around. Oh, I'm sure it's nothing but a slight cold, but thank you for your concern. And thank you for coming tonight. 
This has been the most delightful evening I've spent since I've been in Stark. Good night, Audra. Good night. Good night, Doctor. Good night. I'll see you to the door. Jerry, what are you doing up so late? I was doing some reading and dozed off. What's your excuse, young lady? Do you realize it's past three o'clock in the morning? Jared, I'm worried about Mother. She's been restless all night, and now she has a fever. A fever? All right, I'll ride into town, get Doc Belton out here right away. Jared, I know it's late, but this is very important. Yes, of course. Come on in. Thanks. Well, it's happened again. Martin Erskine was killed tonight. What? How did it happen? Same way. I found him in his office. He'd been hanged just like Gibbons. It's impossible to believe. Was there another note? Yeah. Yeah, there was. That's why I'm here tonight. Read it. This is number two, Sweet Dreams of... Victoria Barclay. You're number three. Jared, what was your mother's connection with Evan Martin? None. None at all, except that they were friends, good friends. Yeah, yeah, I know that, but beyond that, that first note said, for what they did together, all will die as he did. Now, were they partners in anything? In no, business no, or something? No, never, never. Oh. Jared, I think you better get your mother down here. We gotta talk to uh, her. No, no, Sheriff, I don't wanna wake her. She hasn't been feeling well, and this would only... Yeah, yeah well, all right, but we gotta talk to her as soon as possible. Meanwhile, she's gotta have protection. I'll take care of that. Nick's out on the West Range. I think I'll get him back here, too. Well, that's a good idea. How about Heath? No, he's up in the hills chasing mustangs. There's no way to reach him. Sheriff, do you mind if I make a tracing of this? Oh, right ahead. Think someone might recognize the handwriting? I plan to find out. It's unbelievable. Just unbelievable. First, Mr. Gibbons, then Erskine, and now your mother. Now, don't worry about her. She'll be well protected. Yes, of course. And you did the uh, right thing in not telling her. I'm sure it's nothing serious with Mother, but we'd all feel better if you take a look at it. Oh, yes, sir. Good. Thanks, Doc. By the way, Audra doesn't know about the note either. I think it's better to leave it that way until we have some answers. Mm. I won't say a thing to her. Good. Maybe I'll see you at the ranch later.
for you, Murph? When did you get here, Nick? Oh, about a half hour ago. Mac fill you in? Yeah, everything about it. I just told Audrey I got home sooner than I expected is all. Anything new? No, not really. I took the note over to Emily Pearson to see if she might recognize the handwriting. Looks like it was written by some kid. It wasn't written by a kid. Whoever wrote it wants us to think that. Doc Belden is still here? Yeah. Why? Well, at first he thought it was influenza. But now he knows it's pneumonia. someone in the hall. What is that? Something to make you sleep. No. No, no, I don't want to sleep. I don't want to sleep. Please, Mrs. Barkley. Oh, you're ill. This will help you. I want to see my family. Where are my sons? My daughter. I want to see them. Please, doctor. Please. They are my reason for living. Don't you understand? If you take them away from me, if you don't let me see them, I will die. Oh, no. Oh, I'm hurting me. Jared. Oh, God. Oh. You'll sleep now, Mrs. Barkley. Oh. Yes. Dr. Belden, it's Audrey. May I come in? Dr. Belden? Now, Mrs. Barkley, I promise. You've just given me every reason for a mother to live. Is something wrong? No. No, she's sleeping. You look tired. Why don't you get some rest? Oh, you're the one who needs rest. Please, uh, why don't you try to sleep? I'll call you if there's any change. Oh, no, really, I, I couldn't. Nick will show you where the guest room is. Well, if you insist, I'll nap for a few minutes on the sofa in the hall. All we can do now is wait. Won't you come in, Doctor? Oh, Audra.
can't be the same patient I saw there a little while ago. Hello, doctor. Would you look at him? I just can't believe it. Yes? No doubt about it. The fever's broken. You ought to be able to celebrate in a few days <laughs> if you do exactly as I say. Uh, the temperature seems to be normal now, but it's very important that you keep warm. And rest. Plenty of rest. Along with uh, a teaspoon of this every three hours. Audra says you've been here since four o'clock. For this moment, I would gladly have come sooner. Thank you very much, Doctor. No thanks are necessary. I only did what had to be done. Oh, when this bottle's used up, would you stop by my office? I'll refill it. Good afternoon, Jared. Dick. Good afternoon. Oh, well, how's your mother feeling? Much better, thanks. Be up and around a couple of days. Good, I'm glad to hear it. Nick, things been quiet around here? Yeah. What brings you out, Sheriff? This telegram came from Martin Erskine this morning. Martin? Yeah. Janet Davis died insane two years ago. Whereabouts of son unknown. Would have answered sooner, but the catfish are biting. Regards, Jackson, St. Louis Courier. So? I didn't think much about it at first, Nick, but uh, then I realized that Martin telegraphed St. Louis just hours after we found Everett Gibbons in the livery stable. Janet Davis. You know, it's funny, I remember that name, but I don't know why. Yeah, well, I wired that Jackson fellow in St. Louis, and here's the answer I got. Shocked over tragic death of Martin Erskine regarding Janet Davis, suggest you refer to Stockton Eagle Bank files for a full account on her husband, Emery Davis, and Miner's Bank failure. Miner's Bank? That was years ago. Yeah, well, I think we ought to investigate this whole thing further. All right. Best place to start would be Martin's office. Good. I'll meet you back in town. Right. Nick, I'll spell you just as soon as I get back. Jared? Are you going into town? I have to get Mother some medicine. Can I go with you? Why, Miss Barkley, I should be delighted to have your enchanting company. Nick, where'd the sheriff want? Uh, well, we lost a couple of head of cattle, and, well, he had a couple of leads he thought we should know about. Your carriage awaits. <laughs> Now, what is all that with the hand kissing? Crude fellow. Knows nothing of continental manners? Get up. Continental man. Who? Oh, I'll be in my office for a few hours, so I'll pick you up about three, all right? Fine, I have some shopping to do anyway. to go in and see that doctor, well, I just wouldn't advise it. Of oh, all the nerve! Mrs. Jacobin, what happened? In 20 years, Dr. Mara never asked me to take my clothes off. Audra, I warned you now. Audra. Dr. Belden, shame on you. I just saw Mrs. Dakota. Oh. Well, unfortunately, uh, I'm discovering that diagnostic techniques have advanced more rapidly than some patients' understanding. I trust that your mother is improving. Well, she doesn't want to stay in bed any longer, and she's starting to give orders again. Ah, that's a sure sign of recovery. Yes, thanks to you. She's a good patient. And I might add, she has a very competent nurse by her side. Well, I did try to keep after her to take her medicine. She finished it this morning. Good. I'll, uh, I'll refill it. Just take a few minutes. Nothing. Nothing, nothing. Uh, keep this up much longer. I'm gonna need glasses. What are you doing? Just going through these indexes again. Martin published a pretty good newspaper, but he sure didn't know anything about keeping records. <laughs> G's filed under W. Here, take a look at this. First Zeldin's obituary, filed under O. <laughs> now, wait a minute. O for obituary. Well, we looked under D for Davis. Where do you suppose it'd be? I don't know. 
Why don't you start over here? I'll take these and we'll check every file in here. Oh, there we are. Thank you. Well, I know you must be busy, so I'd better be going. I, I was thinking of taking the day off. Uh, maybe taking a quiet drive through your beautiful countryside. I find that most relaxing. That sounds lovely. I, I was thinking, perhaps you'd do me the honor of joining me? Well, thank you, but I'm supposed to meet my brother at three. I'll have you back before three, I promise. Well, I... Uh, the idea doesn't appeal to you? On the contrary, I'd love to go. Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, if you just wait outside, I'll close up the office. Something wrong, Doctor? Well, for one thing, that, uh, that doctor, it's, uh, it's pretty formal under the circumstances. Do you suppose we could make it, Jim? All right, Jim. That's better. Uh, Audra, there's, uh, there's an old ranch house down that road. I've been there on several occasions. It fascinates me. Would you like to see it? If you'd like. Well, perhaps you'd rather go on. No, no, I, I'd like to see it. Good. Good. Despondent over failure of the Miners Bank, which closed its doors after this newspaper revealed that Davis had overextended the bank's capitalization, investing in worthless mining ventures. Heavy withdrawals created a run on the bank and forced its closure when depositors learned that the principal investors, namely Everett Givens and Victoria Barclay, had withdrawn their funds in support for what they did together. Uh, Martin made a note here. See follow-up June 15th. Jared, here it is. Widow leaves town. Mrs. Emery Janet Davis with her nine-year-old son departed this morning's stage. He's bound for St. Louis, presumably to take up new residence in that city. The Davis family holdings, including the ranch home northeast of town, have been turned over to the county clerk for disposition. Well, that must be that old place that the county is always trying to sell every year for taxes. Yeah. Son finds body hanging in study. Sheriff, why don't we get a couple of horses and take a little ride? There's something about being here. It must be the quiet. There's no time standing still. Any man who would build something like this must have had a wife. Children. I mean, look around. Isn't this an expression of love? You have quite an imagination. Perhaps.
expect to go away. I like it here. It's our home. It was our home. Next week, it'll belong to the county. Because your father has been disgraced. No. My father's a fine man. Nobody can say bad things about him. They don't understand, son. You're the only one who understands. Jim? What? You did want to show me around, didn't you? Yes. Yes, of course. Why else would I bring you here? You must imagine the house as it was. With uh, fresh paint and paper. Comfortable furniture. And there was always a fire in the fireplace. Right now, that's not too easy to imagine. Really, I, I can see it very clearly. This looks like it was a billiard room. Yes, this was the billiard room. Perhaps you'd uh, prefer to see the, the kitchen. It's, it's back that way. Fine. Don't be frightened. I'm not going to hurt your mother. No. No, that would be senseless. Waste. She's much as said so herself, you know. Her death would prove nothing. Oh. What yours? Watch out! Hey, 
you see. See, your mother would suffer that. As he suffered. And as my mother suffered. You see? Audra. Audra. It'll... It won't take long. No. no. <laughs> Audra. It won't take long. I told you. It won't take long, Paul. And you see, Father... Father will be so pleased. <laughs> Sounded like Belvin. Yeah, around back. Listen to me, I have to. Father expects it. Belvin. Who are you? Go away. You know, right here. You better get off this ranch. This is my father's ranch, you know. Where's Audra? What have you done with her? Nothing. I haven't done anything. She... I guess she didn't like it here. Why'd she run away? Go away! You hear me? Go away! Call it, Doc. Right there. I'll tell. You can't stop me. You know right. You can't stop me! Go away! She's hungry. Silas brought her a bowl of soup, but uh, she'd have none of that. I think she wants a steak about three inches thick. Well, that's a good sign. Where is she? She's in the gun room with Mother. Oh. Uh, remember, Chef, she likes it nice and rare. Well, 
You ladies are looking lovely this evening. Jared. Mother, Padre. Is it over? Yes, Audra, it's over. We buried him beside his father. It's all so hard to believe. He seems so kind, so gentle. Oh, Audra. You know, I've been thinking about those notes he left. It's almost as though he wanted someone to stop him, wanted to be caught. Jared, maybe someday there will be a better understanding of things like this. Maybe. Well, I am starved. I think I'll join you in one of those three-inch steaks. Why can't I do that when I'm playing for money? Mm -hmm. 